UFC 302, this past weekend, we saw our favorite fighter lose. It was a tough one to watch. He put on a valiant effort, showed his heart, I think earned even more respect, even though he's one of the most respected fighters. That's Dustin the Diamond Poirier. I have to agree. And then hats off to Islam. Um, proved he's pound for pound number one. Showed his resilience and probably his toughest fight we've seen to date. Yeah. Um, but before we get into that main card, Alex, how about we recap the prelims? Yeah. So in uh, Newark, New Jersey, Newark, we saw nine decisions and three subs. Two subs in the uh, the main card. So no knockouts. No, no TKOs. knockouts. This is a rare card. Um, opening the card, we saw Mitch Raposo. He lost his UFC debut to the formerly bitten Andre Lima. Andre Lima missed weight by five pounds, and I imagine it's a big miss. Yeah, I imagine if the weight was close, you know, if the weight had been cut and Andre Lima came in close, this was going to be a way more uh, different fight. You know, the competitiveness was going to be there for Raposo. He didn't back down, but Lima was able to win by uh, decision overall. Going forward, we saw— He didn't get bit this time. What's that? No bites this time. No bites. Good thing for uh, Raposo. You don't want to bite anybody in the UFC. Especially or, on your debut. Or just in general. Just it's usually a good rule of thumb to go by. No biting, like we're going to tell our dogs. Uh, Eileen Perez settled the bad blood with Jocelyn Edwards in the next fight. Perez earned a knockdown early, six takedowns, several reverses, and then one final winning twerk. It was an impressive performance where, like I said, she, she did everything necessary to win the fight. The Habibi... Basil Hafez delivered Mickey Gall his third straight loss, outstriking and outscoring Gall on the cards. This was a great fight. It was Back a very and good forth, fight. Both guys showing some heart. Both guys yeah. showing some toughness. At the end there, Hafez looked a little gassed, but he, you know, he waved his arms out and he threw strikes when he needed to to secure the decision victory again. Hey, uh, nobody says you can't be tired. You just got to be able to push through that. Right. You have to fight the adversity. Phil Rowe dropped his second straight b fight by decision after not being able to, su to secure much offense. I'm a big Phil Rowe fan, but, yeah, his last couple fights have been a little uh, uh, lackluster. Lackluster. Yeah. He has the length. He's a striker. He has a good ground game. You think he has the talent to do it, but it's just he's been missing something. Right, yeah. This, the Celtic kid, Jake Matthews, came out with a, his aggressive style, proving that – you know, the, the aggressive style, the freestyle, it's enough. You just have to put it to use. Next, Grant Dawson stayed poised through adversity to outlast the guillotine early, the deep guillotine, and he won the following two rounds, in my opinion, clearly. Joe Selecki, he did everything he could. It was a wrestling. We knew it was going to be a grappling fight coming in, and this one, this one was great. Dawson did everything he needed to do, and in my opinion, won wholeheartedly. He fought the adversity, did everything needed. Now, moving on to the heavyweight division, this was originally on the main card. Jalton Almeida made a quick, quick Yeah, we actually quick talked work. about this one as one of, the, one of our featured fights because right. it was a main card fight. Almeida made quick work of Alexander Romanov. He secured the takedown, looked for the rear naked choke. Halfway through the first round, was able to lock it did in, and... I think in honestly, this is the kind of fight we've been waiting for Almeida. We know he's yeah. great on the ground. He's dominant on the ground. I think we'll he, go out there and finish the fight. And that's what he did. He did it quickly. Yep. And I think he redeemed himself of that Chris Curtis knockout, you know, staying into that takedown when you already got so many, he wasted no time here. And he, yes, because the heavyweight division is how it is. I mean, you win this fight and wins another fight. He's right back where he was before the Chris yep. Curtis fight or the Curtis blades fight. He's right there. And then finishing off the prelims, Roman Kopolov gave Cesar Almeida his first career loss, grabbing five out of nine takedowns and a solid knockdown for the split decision. Yeah, impressive performance from Kopolov. I was like one Kopolov. One of his first fights in the UFC, we were right when we were starting to do this. Put him on my radar. I've been, like, I've been liking him ever since. He's this, a rising star in the UFC. One of the many fights in this fight card where the judging was questionable and it was a split decision where it probably should not have been a split decision win for him. Honestly, though, if we could have taken that questionable judging and take it all the way to the main card, I wouldn't have complained about any fight on this, on this one. Let's move on to the first fight of the main card. Rude boy Randy Brown taking on Elizio Zaleski Dos Santos. Dos Santos. The longest name. Longest name versus the longest reach. And, you know, 
a long fight. Unanimous decision. Long fight. Randy Brown looked really good in this fight. He continued to show. I think this is now seven out of eight wins he has. Yep, seven uh, out of eight. I mean, he continues moving up. He's a guy that he has all the talent in the world. He has all the physical tools, God-given tools. Yep. Where if he continues to put it together, it's not going to be long till we see him as a serious contender in this division and serious, you know, belt right, I challenger. Agree. But I think he's already – I mean, if, if you look at his – he's had like close to 20 fights in the UFC it seems like. I feel like he's already a contender. He's just been fighting in that lower division because the, the division is so heavy. Sometimes it takes you a little while to move up, but now it's I think it's undeniable at this right. point. Seven out of eight wins. I think he I think he's on his kind of hot streak. I think he's a rocket fire. He had a call out. He wants top fifteen Jeff Neal. I I think that's a good call out. If Jeff he Neal, doesn't get one. Jeff Neal. It's a good name. Everybody recognizes the name. I think the sixteen and 0 Michael Moraz could fight he hasn't fought in 2024 so he's fresh or joaquin buckley he's seven he's the 11th rank he's been talking all kind of shit and you know i just think it's i would like uh jeff neal but honestly walk him versus joaquin buckley that would be you could fight you could beat that a main event of a fight night have that randy brown be, joaquin buckley that'd be perfect i like that fight that was the one that i thought would be the most entertaining because canon or not canon uh joaquin buckley is a talker Randy Brown can talk the talk. He's been begging pretty much for a, a fight night main event. And he Joaquin needs Buckley. He needs a big test. If there, if somebody's gonna stop, I think his it's a good rise, test for both guys. Whoever wins that fight can can go on. Yeah, that's a big stepping stone. All right, let's go with Joaquin Buckley for the who's next. Moving on to Nico Price, he delivered the upset victory over the late notice replacement Alex Morono. It was a good performance from Nico. I'm second, not gonna lie. Second win in a row. Or he's not in a row. Second time beating Alex Morono, but it was in a row in their fights. Um, unanimous decision this time. It was a great, like you said, great performance by Nico Price. Um, Morono was completely gassed out at the end. He had nothing left. Yeah, it was Couldn't surprising to up. see. I guess you can kind of contribute that to being short notice. But, but at it the was same six time. Six weeks short notice. So yeah, it six weeks. Like, it's not crazy. And at the same time, like, you're a professional fighter, like, yeah, you should be in pretty good patty, shape usually. Patty the batty. Like, maybe he can't just because he gets so heavy sometimes. Maybe somebody like him. But, yeah, just generally speaking, you should be able to Six know, weeks. go three rounds. Overall, I don't think you take anything away from Nico Price. This was a great win for him. Absolutely. I agree. For Nico Price, it's kind of hard to decide, you know, who's next for him. I was thinking Phil Rowe, but they've already fought. Um, so I picked Nico out. Nico Price has fought a lot of guys. Euros Medic. Medich, Medich the, doctor, the medic, the doctor, um, Jeremiah Wells. They had a canceled bout for UFC 302. Actually, um, Wells had to pull out for injury. Or Brian Battle. That would just be like two vets, UFC vets that are just always down. Let's to, to let's scrap. run back the fight that got canceled that should have been this weekend. I think that, that would be Nico a more gets the win. Fight. Let's let's pit them against each other again. All right, let's go. Jeremiah Wells, Nico Price. Now. One of the only, one of the only three finishes on the whole card, Kevin Holland versus McCall. The loudmouth Kevin Holland. Olechizidik, Juke. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna keep trying until I get it. I will never get it though. Uh, Apologies to Alexa Juke. Holland got dropped early, but he was main, able to maintain his composure. That's the most important part. Yeah, Hussar. He showed he had the power. I mean, we rarely see Kevin Holland get dropped like that. Yeah, but as you said, right. he got dropped. He was on the ground, did not panic, kept his composure. In fact, you would say that uh, Olisajuk, Mikhail. he is the one that did not keep his composure once he yeah. dropped Kevin Holland. Yeah, he easily got trapped. He in got that a little ball. sloppy. Kevin Holland knew exactly what to look for, got him in the arm bar, and. If you have a weak stomach, <laughs> I would not watch this fight over again because this arm was just bending the wrong way yeah. for a good 30 seconds to a minute, it seemed like. It, it made me feel like the— uh, It was the, hard to watch. I had to turn away because I did not want to see it just snap. Yeah, it looked like it could have at any point just come through the skin. Snap and come through the skin. Yeah, one of those like 3D movie moments, that would not have been fun. But this, um, is a, this is a win Kevin Holland needed after his last performance, which was a little lackluster when he got beat up by Michael Page. As yep. he said, I'm the greatest. Gatekeeper I, Great keeper. Time. Give me anybody low. Give me anybody high. I'll fight him. So, That's why you got to love Kevin Holland. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, so he called. He kind of called out two people in the post-fight press conference. That's the only two people because some two people I have on my radar because somebody like Kevin Holland. He doesn't opinion, need to call out anybody. He'll fight anybody. In my opinion, though, he can get the fight he wants. He's done it enough. And in Dana the White loves him. Exactly. So he kind of called out Marvin Vittori. He wanted the rematch at middleweight. I would love that fight. The only problem is Marvin Vittori would just grab onto him and try not to let go. Probably that's what happened the first time. Um, the other fight is he said he got to keep his kids in line. He's the daddy. He wants to fight Joaquin Buckley to Again? shut his mouth. I would love to see that fight because Joaquin Buckley – Got knocked out by Kevin Holland and stayed talking shit to Kevin Holland. Yeah, I don't. So get, run it back. I don't understand why you're gonna talk shit to the dude who knocked you out. So run that fight back. I would love to see that. Honestly, any fight Kevin Holland's in, I'm gonna watch and I'm gonna love to see. He's an entertaining guy. Whether he wins, whether he loses, whether he gets dominated, whether he dominates. You're right now. Kevin Holland's much watch TV. And I honestly think we're getting, we're bound to get a Joaquin Buckley like fight news soon with all these people. Who, like he's talking all kind of shit on Twitter. He's calling out DC. He's Say what you want about Joaquin Buckley. He's casting the net wide. He's right. going to catch a fish. He's going to catch a fight. He's going to catch yeah. his hands. Not mine, though. He'd beat the shit out of me. All right, let's Any move of these on. guys would beat the shit out of any of us. So True. Let's just put that out there. Co-main. Co-main event. Sean Strickland. Versus. Paulo Costa. The shy Paulo Costa? I don't know what that performance was. But it was a weird fight. I mean, Paulo Costa, I understand what he was doing. Um, I feel to, like, Trying to use the... He I, knew it was five rounds, and he knows he's had uh, cardio issues before, besides his fights against uh, Yoel. Right. Uh, so I think he that was trying, and he knew, I mean, Sean Strickland, you're not going to, at the at the middleweight division, you're not going to have better cardio than Sean Strickland. He's right, always going to keep going. Let's pump up Sean Strickland, because Costa had a poor performance. Sean Strickland stayed walking him down, as he does to every oppo opponent. Sean Strickland did his thing in this fight. Right. He, and he, that's the good thing about Strickland. You know how he's going to fight coming in. He's telling you in the press conference how he's going to fight. He's telling you in his last 10 fights how he's going to fight. And even the announcer's like, oh, he's beating up his leg early. Costa beating up Strickland's leg. Didn't stop him. He no, was still walking forward. Walking he forward. was still fine. I'm going to march you down, and I'm going to strike and gain points. That's why if you look at Sean Strickland's like career win, most of – or maybe not most, but like 40 – 50 to 60% of his wins are by decision. Well, because the pressure he puts on you, he even said it after the fight, it was boring because Costa. He Didn't put the pressure anything. on Costa, and if you're not going to do anything back, he's just going to keep doing that and win the fight, which is what he did. This and was it, another fight that should not have been a split decision. Right. That, one that judge had it. 49-46 Costa. I don't understand that. At Joe all. at one point said throughout the night that one of the judges, and I'm pretty sure it was the same judge that scored it, 49-46. He had some crazy cards. He said he needed to, uh, he needed to be checked for drugs. Which I wholeheartedly agree. I love the good kind during of the fight cards when the announcers, because you know they're not that far from the judges, just oh, yeah. steady talking shit about the judges. And I they love deserve that. that in a lot they of do, cases. They do because some because of these they're, they're doing things like this, calling a fight forty nine forty six in favor of Costa, where he didn't win a round. You could say he won one, maybe two rounds, but winning four rounds like ridiculous. That's nuts. Anywho, for Sean Strickland, thank God he got to the win he deserved, though. I think because of his performance, he fought exactly how he fought against. Uh, Adesanya, he did that kind of walk down ex like he does every single fight. But Adesanya was a little more brave and he got caught, which Costa was afraid to get caught almost. Right. I think you set that man back up for a title shot. I have nothing else. Give him Drykus. I mean, he arguably nothing beat else Drykus. It. He arguably beat DDP. I think that he probably DDP probably fights Adesanya. The thing about Strickland is he probably deserves that fight, but right. you offer him a fight, he's going to take it. Right. So he's probably not going to fight that next. But now yeah, did, that was his call out. I hope he gets it. I'm sure you hope he gets it as well. If he doesn't fight DDP, who's left? Like Bobby Knuckles or somebody? Uh, he get. Uh, I mean, Bobby Knuckles is fighting Shamayev. So the That's winner true. of that, winner of that fight, uh, can. I mean, Sean Cannonier, can Cannonier wins this weekend. I've seen him in that leotard. He can wrestle if he needs to. He just doesn't like to. Yeah. Uh, I think and the, we've seen Kamayev having a, a gas tank kind of issue when he was fighting Edwards. That if Edwards Kamayev would have gone five, Usman, Usman, yeah, yes. Sorry. If Edwards Usman or God damn it, Kamayev. Well, Usman, I mean that was the first like test. Well, he fought Gilbert Burns and it was questionable too. Yeah, that's true. Then he fought and that's at one seventy. Then he fought at one seventy at one eighty five and questionable. The so. more I like, the more I talk about, it, the more I like it. Either give Sean Strickland the DDP rematch for the belt. Or line him up for Kamzat Kamayev, regardless, honestly. Well, I think winner of Chemayev 
Whitaker, winner gets title shot. Okay. But yeah, Strickland. That's probably realistic. Strickland still, he's right there. He's top of the division. All right. And lastly, the fight we probably want to talk about the least. But talk we're about not the gonna, least. We're but not going to just blow through it. We're going to talk about it. Dustin it was, showed heart. Yeah. It looked like early on this was going to be one of those like, oh, Fuck. shit, Dustin. Put your head in your hands and just cry. Like right away. At 11.15. Right away. It looked like Islam first, second round was just going to. Got him on the back. He got him exactly where he wanted. Dustin survived. He stayed fighting hands heavy. Dustin, he hit him with a couple of nice elbows. We've never seen Islam beat up like that. We've never seen him bleeding like that. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a hard fight. It was similar to, I mean, it was his second longest fight other than the Volk decision. And one surprising thing That's is a big thing. two judges had it 2-2 going into the fifth round. Now, in the fifth round, Islam ended up getting the Dars choke, getting the win. But Dustin... I mean, Don't get me we hope. talk about the questionable judges. Like, I love Dustin. I think he was losing the fight. I think it was 3-1, like one judge had it. Right. But there was a world where Dustin survives that fifth round. If he could have just not been taken down with two and a half minutes. With that crazy ankle. Right. Uh, like, he went, He could He could have won that fight on the yeah. scorecard. Yeah. But, but, I mean, Dustin, he showed heart. He showed what everybody loved. He only gained respect. He didn't lose any respect in this fight. Um you got to give Islam his props. But yeah, he was Islam. a better striker than I thought he was going to be. He, you know, he did well on the feet, obviously did amazing on the ground. But the 14 fight win streak says what's exactly what's needed. I mean, Islam, I think he's pound for pound number 1. Right. People say John Jones, but John Jones, one interesting thing, since 2021, John Jones has one win, 1 and 0. Right. Islam has like six or seven finishes since 2021 yeah so that's the thing is like if you're gonna john jones the goat islam is the current pound for pound number if one. you're gonna spout yourself as being the best yada 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 this guy is at the very least the most active best that could be. well even volt came out i think it was today and he said islam's pound for pound number one just because of his activity yeah I, i'd imagine and dana's just hyping up john because dana's an asshole because J- dana knows john. that john jones sells more right than islam that's why he likes and there's him. more fans like i'll root for john jones in a fight way before i root for islam especially since he just murdered my hero but it's also crazy because Islam, he doesn't do anything bad. John Jones is a literal criminal, but people will still cheer for him more. <laughs> Shout out John Jones. But yeah, uh, I think that wraps up uh, UFC 302. Well, right before that, who do you think Islam's going to fight next? Does he go welterweight or does he fight Armin Saruk? He said next? he wants uh, Leon Edwards it's if Leon wins against Bilal, which I think everybody thinks he will. I hope he um, doesn't. I hope he doesn't. I think he still needs to defend the belt a couple more times at 155. He's only if he, defended it once against a 155er. If he fights 155 again, it has to be Armin, in my opinion. I think Armin, or if he goes to welterweight, or you think sh- he's— shit, give him uh, Max Holloway. That would be crazy. That's a little wild card in there. Yeah, or but yeah, Justin Gaethje's lined right up for it If he moves well. up, yeah, I mean, him versus Leon would be electric. Sweet. So, yeah, that, that'll wrap up UFC 302.